So the motherboard has arrived for the 10900K. It's a Gigabyte Ultra Drawable uh, Z490M. As you can see, it's a brown PCB M80X board. It's literally the cheapest uh, Z490 board in the UK. You can see the VRM is absolutely pathetic. Uh, heat sinks not terrible. But as you're seeing, we've got the 10900K in there. Got the Patriot Viper Steel 4400C19 memory, which probably won't be with XMP on this board, I'll have to see. And uh, yeah, it's a very basic board, it only has three fan headers, one just there next to the 8 pin, uh, one there for the CPU fan, and a three pin over there by the SATA ports. Um, it does have one button, but that's for Q flash, not for the power button so I'm just going to short it out with a screwdriver it's all push pins instead of screws for the heat sinks and stuff right we have the uh, Gigabyte uh, Z97MUD with the i9 10900K engineering sample in the PC here you can see it is working now uh, the other day I was trying to get it to work and having some blue screen issues but it turned out to be the OS. So we've got a, a fresh OS here and you can see it is working. Got 10 cores, 20 threads. Everything is at stock, default settings. And we're just going to check out the performance. Going to use Benchmate for the, um, the overclocks here. You can see I did do a bit of testing the other day. So at stock speed it's boosting to around 4.1. There you go, about 2200. So what I'll do is I'll bring up hardware info and give you another run here. So at the minute I'm pretty sure uh, this is about as fast as a Ryzen 7 3800 or 3700X. Right, there we go. So you can see it's topping out at less than 50 degrees, 48. You can see it's only reaching 4.2. So it's not a great performance straight out the gate. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go into the BIOS and we're going to try a couple of different things. This board is a very, very cheap board, so you can't really expect that much out of it. I'll be surprised if we get 5 GHz out of it. So, first thing we're going to try here is the CPU upgrade. So, we're going to load the gaming profile and just see what happens. Now I know this board won't boot XMP on this RAM because the RAM is 4400 so I'm just going to set up a quick 3200 uh, C14 profile here. It does have all of the timings which you can set manually though which is really good for a low end board. You can see literally everything is settable. I'm guessing Intel specify that it has to be like that. So we're going to go with 14, 14, 14, 28. And on the T4 we're going to go with 24. And command rate I'm going to set to 1. And TRFC I'm going to set to 300. This is just so we don't run complete potato timings. Um, we'll also give the RAM 1.4 volts. So on the gaming OC profile we're at 4.3, 1.27 volts. Got R15 up again, I'm just gonna run that. Also got the temperatures here as well. 22.51 and maximum temperature is about 52 degrees. Now we're gonna try the advanced profile. Don't really know what the difference is, we're going to keep the memory at 3200. We're at 4.5 gigahertz now. Um, let me just find the temperatures. 
Might come past them. There they are. Yep, so 4.5 gigahertz now. But you can see under load it's dropping down to 4.3 still. So I'm guessing this is the same as the gaming profile but with a bit of a boost on the single core. You can see we're still only hitting 54 degrees and it scored 22 to 27 which is slightly worse. I'll just run the single core for a second and you can see it's running 4.5 on single core. I'm not going to run the whole thing though because this is still pretty slow. This time uh, we're going to put CPU upgrade on default and enable uh, enhanced multi-core performance. Core enhancement you can see it's trying to run faster. So we'll start the benchmark and see what kind of clocks we actually get. So you can see still stuck at 4.3. There we go, 2246 again. So you can see, if you were to just plunk a 10900K in this board, you wouldn't really get very good performance. Let's just run a quick single thread. So on the single thread, you are getting 4.5, 4.6, but it is dipping down to 4.4 as well. And this is with it only running at 55 degrees. Clearly on this board, if you're going to run it with a 10900K, you're pretty mad. Um, we'll try a manual overclock and see if we can get it to go any better. We were stuck at 4.3 on the manual overclock so I'm just going to show you quickly how to get a, a proper manual OC out of this. So we're going to set the CPU clock ratio to 46, um, ring ratio to 44, we're going to leave the memory where it is we're going to run a fixed voltage, we're going to use a v-core voltage of 1.3 this is the maximum this board will go to by the way, it literally doesn't go any higher so it is pretty terrible in that regard um, everything else you can pretty much leave the same um, advanced voltage settings you need to go onto uh, CPU and VRM settings and you want to set the load line calibration to high to minimize the V droop although it's still pretty terrible on this board so the other thing you need to do to make sure the CPU doesn't power throttle is you need to go on turbo power limits and enable and you just need to max out all of the power limits on here basically. Now we're in a fixed 4.6 gigahertz overclock. Temperatures are down here, hopefully it doesn't throttle now. Yeah, you can see I've set it correctly. It's running 4.6 all the time. However, you can see how much the voltage is dropping even though we're on high load line calibration. Temperatures are still really low, like not even 60 degrees. But we've gained 200 points now, so we're up to 2400 in R15. I'll quickly show you a run of R20 as well. Max temperature only 64 degrees, and you can see there 5000. 683 points, no thermal throttling, no power throttling on the VRM, and we got the ring ratio at 4.4 um, as well by the way. So we'll try go a bit higher, we'll go for 4.7 and see what happens. Rather than have CPU-Z and hardware monitor up this time or hardware info, I've just got hardware info up. You can see it's at 4.7, the effective clock's at 4.7 as well, and the temperature's down at the bottom there. I've just got the hottest core and core zero and the package temp now, and you can see it's scoring uh, 24.66, which is a little bit higher again. I'll run R20 for you.
there you go, 5,823 points. You can see we still only hit 64 degrees. Uh, this is pretty much the maximum uh, clock that this can go to. I will try 4.8 again, but it seems to be pretty unstable at 4.8, and it actually crashes in some cases. So this is why I'm actually going to get rid of this board. Um, I've already ordered a replacement board, but unfortunately the 1.3 volts uh, limit is just too low, even for ambient overclocking. So that is quite disappointing. We're at 4.8 now. You can see there, you just scroll down a bit so you can see the temperature. So yeah, temperature 60 degrees. R15, it's pretty much alright. You can see there we've got another score improvement. Gone to 25.15. But in R20, it doesn't always pass at 4.8. The reason it can't get any hotter than 64 degrees even on air cooling is because um, the board can't supply enough voltage and current to actually get it to go any warmer. So unless you're going to run a 10900K on a 212 EVO then this board is completely useless really. I wouldn't even recommend it for running a 10900K at stock. You can see there we did get a little bit of an improvement and it did pass amazingly. But it only hit 66 degrees Celsius. And like I say, uh, we literally can't go any higher now. It won't even boot at 4.9 most of the time. It will get into Windows and then Insta crash. So if you're running like a 10600K or you want to run a locked CPU with faster RAM, this board might be alright. It does have um, not a terrible I.O. to be honest. Uh, it's got a decent number of USB ports, it's got five and uh, the PS2 port as well. But yeah, it's, it's definitely not even good enough for ambient air-cooled or water-cooled overclocking at all with a 10900K or even any other CPU to be honest because you could run more than 1.3 volts uh, on a 10600K daily with an air cooler fairly easily without the temps getting out of hand. So yeah, amazingly it is still going, so that's pretty impressive. But yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be keeping this board any longer. So um, that will probably be the end of this video. But the engineering sample 10900K does work. And the reason I bought this board is because it was the cheapest one. And I just wanted to test if the CPU even worked, which it does. So, yeah, that's great. Um, I've ordered a proper board now, an MSI Unify. So that should be here um, in a couple of days. So look out for a video on that, and hopefully we'll be able to overclock the CPU properly. I'm hoping for 5 gigahertz at least. Um, underwater, maybe we'll get to 5.1, 5.2. But being a very early engineering sample, if you look on CPU-Z, you can see the stepping, which is P0, uh, just there. And um, yeah, that's basically like the very, very first engineering sample batch. So this is a really old engineering sample, so it, it might be one of the worst clockers. The Gigabyte board for the 10900K is gone now, but I just want to show you quickly what scores I managed to get in the end. Uh, I managed to get it running stable at 4.8 GHz with the memory at 3500 MHz. And this is the 7-zip benchmark with Benchmate, and you can see the score and temperature there, 58 degrees max. And this was with the memory at 3200, this was with it at 3400. So I did go through and tighten the timings up quite a lot. 
Um, just, I think I got 3,500 in the end. You can see here, geek bench score, that definitely wasn't my best one. Um, that's with the memory running at 4,000. It could run 4,000 C16 with the commander 8 at 2T and the secondary and third timings loosened up. That is my actual highest score that I got there, 47,591 at 4.8 on the core and 2000 C16 on the memory. Um, in Cinebench 11.5 we got 28.78. And that was at 3200 megahertz on the memory. Cinebench R15, we got 2657. Uh, then 2668, that was with the memory at 3400. And then this is with the memory at 3500 and much tighter timings, we managed to get 2685. Uh, R20, uh, this is at 3200 again, uh, 6219, and we got 6309 at 3400, I don't think I ran that at 3500, but PyFast, uh, this is W Prime 32M. is 124 m you can see it got 60 degrees there 59 seconds 3200 c14 again yeah so that's it uh, msi board should be coming later today so it will do much better on that board so look out for that in the uh, next video or maybe the one after goodbye